All right, folks, welcome to another beer review. Again, sat outside another absolutely sweltering, sticky, humid, awful day. Um, let's just put it this way. If I could do the splits, my testicles would be doing the splits as well. I'll let you, uh, pardon the pun, sit on that. So I thought I'd uh, shoot another beer review outside, now that it's cooled down slightly, um, but it's still a little bit sticky, as you can see, I'm just a sticky mess. And I almost look like a communist with this uh, green shirt on. So today, we're gonna have a look at the double dry hopped version of Fort Point Pale Ale. Um, 6.6%, it's quite heavy for a pale ale, brewed by the legendary Trillium. Um, obviously, we had uh, a few beers come to the UK recently. Um, American, these, you know, these beers from breweries like this are becoming ever more um, commonly available. Uh, sometimes you're going to pay a, a hefty price. Um, I paid £10 from beer moth um I, when i saw these hit the online shops i was like do i but then i thought no and it goes back to that point that i think we're making here in the uk some of the best uh, just beers in general but especially like the the hoppy beers because they're big sellers aren't they really and um you know a lot of breweries go visit these breweries like um other half Trillium, Treehouse, Thinback, Vale, you name it. And uh, and when they come back, we start to brew these sorts of beers and we're doing them really, really well. So I wasn't initially gonna pick any of these beers up, but while I was in Manchester, went into Beer Moth and I saw this and a Foda Lager in the fridge. So I thought, do you know what? I'll be that twat and uh, pick it up so looking forward to trying this giving it a go so because it doesn't like give you any description on the the can i have actually got some notes so we're taking it a little bit seriously now so it's a uh, story time with uncle Pete. uncle peter can't even say my own name properly how the hell am i supposed to read so this double dry hopped pail contains the same base ingredients for both malt and hops as Fort Point Pale Ale, but with an additional dry hop of Citra. The added hops richly enhance the juicy tropical fruit flavours of pineapple slash mango, create elevated green, herbaceous aromatics and increase body. So of course the regular version of this beer uh, is primarily brewed with Columbus and Citra, so I'm always up for someone added a bit more Citra into the mix and uh, yeah so you can actually get different variants of this like a galaxy version a tiki motoika version as you would expect and uh, according to untapped this has got 4.23 out of 5 based on a tiny amount of um, check-ins being 49,500 and uh, yeah so it's one of those iconic beers isn't it really albeit a dry hopped version so uh, beautiful artwork found on all the trillion beers and i've even got some information about that as well so the artwork is by a guy called kevin chino it's spelled c-i-n-o i'd imagine my apologies if i uh, get that wrong which i do tend to do uh, so the labels are pretty much like personal to to himself and the founder of Trillium and uh, all of their labels are pretty much you know showcasing local areas and in this case a local well local landmarks with uh, giving a nice portrayal of a street lamp that you would find on Congress Street which is another Trillium beer and uh, yeah albeit with a little bit of tinkering. I'm not sure if that'll pick it up. Oh, it's focused on that perfectly. Uh, as you can see, there's some malts and hops at the base of the, the lamp. 
really really nice nice pencil style drawing and uh, yeah just a really nicely presented kind of beer uh, if you want to find out more um, about the artwork of Trillium as well as uh, the guy going on about some of the various labels that has been designed uh, then I'll put a link down below to a really nice article from 2014 from Boston magazine who says you don't learn anything on a clueless drinker beer review so getting a massive whiff of weed nearby share the wealth just you, you know you can come through the the gate We'll share a spliff and I might even give you a, a little thimble of this. I'd do the same. Not that I touch any narcotics like that. Anyway, let's give this a pour. And already pouring very nice. Almost has like a slight green tinge um, as it's pouring into the glass. But once you do get it in the glass, my oh my look at that looking beautiful in this asvex teku really nice opaque dense chewy looking beer nice orange it's like a mixture of like pulpy orange and grapefruit juice very very nice indeed just about a lining's worth of uh, a lining's worth half a finger's worth of white head due to the uh, nature of the pour looking very good indeed isn't it let's see what we get on the nose oh well definitely getting that ripe punchy mango pineapple citra is in there by the bucket load of course oh wow really nice zesty orange juice nice grapefruit like aroma even though obviously I read it on the description of Untapped and then noticed it in the Twatty notebook, it does have a herbal edge to it, but it works really, really well. Green, slightly savoury. There is a bit of dankness in there. But oh man, it's got a real sort of potency to it. Um, let's see when this was canned. I can't read that for the life of me. Uh, the 5th of June, obviously we're going by the US date in here. 5th of June, 2023. Uh, we are now on the 6th of September. So, you know, not the freshest, but they have been um, in the UK in their recent sort of um, stint, if you will, for a few weeks, months now. But like I said, stuff like this is becoming, you know, ever more common on British shores. And if you want to pay that little bit extra um, to try something, I mean, I wouldn't have just bought a random trillion beer. You know, you, you hear about these beers. This is one of those ones for like years, like my American sort of, um, the, like the American beer tubers I used to watch. Well, the ones who used to be able to get it, because of course, you know, licensing laws, and um, shipping stuff across the US, very, very complicated. So, you know, there'd be instances where people who would be living quite close to the general area where certain beers are being brewed and they just would not have access to it. In fact, there's been instances where, you know, you'll get a, an American beer from a brewery you've never heard of. You'll drink it, review it, talk about it on like a beer chat or a beer forum, whatever. And you'll get like a local saying, I can't even get that beer. And I live not too far away from brewery. Obviously, if you live close to brewery, you can just go to the But of course, I think it all, again, stuff like that depends on the, uh, the laws in the US. So it's just weird, isn't it? How easily accessible these beers are. No, I'm not Italian. How easily the flies are enjoying this though. It, it's just mad. And, you know, there was a point where the only way you'd really be able to get hold of these beers is if you were traveling uh, to said state, area, brewery, or if you had friends who lived over there, or friends who were visiting, or if you, you know, 
had someone who worked in customs who would have their own ways of getting beers or paying out your ass for stuff like this where you'd have to literally remortgage your house you know to that point where it became only people who worked in like marketing and finance could drink beers like this in the uk but now they're popping up everywhere and especially with the event of loads of collaboration brewery brews being done here in the uk and like relationships and friendships being established from brewer to brewer brewery to brewery internationally not just between uk and america but all over the world um, and like tap takeovers and stuff like that it's so much easier to get hold of these beers and there's even like specialist websites and bottle shops and stuff that will stock mainly stuff like this and sometimes you are going to pay a little bit more um, but yeah I thought I want to give this a try I'll pay that I, I, it was there it was staring me at the face in the face and I thought you know what there is a chance that I'll try this. I've not even got to the beer yet. There's a chance that I'll try this and I'll think, yeah, but I could get this next week when breweries release like their 20 pale beers for the week. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, th that's how I'm justifying this to myself. Not really in a financial situation to be able to you know, spend 10 quid on a pale ale, but it is what it is and what it is is what it is so it looks very nice it smells absolutely gorgeous so fruity let's give it a taste cheers folks well. absolutely top draw a really nice body to it soft mouthfeel gentle sweetness you're definitely getting the citra which I'm all for it's one of my favorite hops I mean it is basically like the basic bitch hop let's be honest but you know come autumn time starbucks with the pumpkin spice lattes just drown me in it there's a little bit of like a herbal green finish on the back end ever so slight medicinal notes not gonna lie not the biggest fan of that but it's not enough to detract from the drinking experience fucking noisy kids but that upfront burst of flavor is so satisfying it's not like the most intense pale ale I've ever had I don't know why we try and strive to get these like beers that are just like trying to one up each other just sometimes you want to just a really tasty just satisfying beer I mean this is above that but it's it's really really good I actually didn't realize it was a dry hopped version or double dry hop version uh, until I actually got it out the fridge and looked at it and started writing notes. Would I pay 10 quid again for this? Under the circumstances, I wouldn't rush out and get another can of it straight away. Um, I curse people who live right near the brewery who can get like a four pack of this for like $20 or something. But it's like, um, it was in the uh, Too Old um, Beer Club group that even though we have only ever got one box and then the group, uh, well, because of Brexit, they couldn't really ship to the UK. Um, so I only got to experience it once, but it stayed in the, the Facebook group. And uh, I can't remember what the post was, but I think I uh, put a comment on about how much 
um, I miss seeing loads of Mikola and two old beers because they're two of my favourite breweries. And then some guy, I don't know if he was like being sarcastic in a jokey way or being a bit of a dick, but he was like, oh yeah, it must be so hard, you know, to find beers when you've got the likes of Cloudwater, Track, Verdant, you know, listing off all the really good like UK breweries. And it's like, yeah. I don't know what point I was trying to make there. Um, and I wasn't trying to like out someone for being a dick. But it is a tough life, isn't it? But it's definitely one. If I got presented a can of it, I'm, I'm happy to take it off your hands. But you're still getting that sort of like sticky, resiny, piney Chinook. Is it Chinook? Columbus, not Chinook. Ignore that. But it works beautifully well. Uh, not only with the initial citra, but also the additional citra in there. Oh yeah, and I'd, I would happily um, probably pay the same to at least try um, like the original Four Point Pale Ale. This to me, I'm instantly thinking of when I tried um, what, are the, what are those famous beers by The Alchemist? Focal Banger and Heady Topper. And again, at the time that I tried those beers, the UK breweries were still churning out, even at that time, some of the best IPAs, pales, double IPAs. They still are. Can't stress that enough. But you drink it, and it's like, it's got this, like, almost, like, the classic American IPA taste, but obviously completely different style to, like, a West Coast, that sort of thing. But you just know that you're drinking an American brewed craft beer. Now, that's probably the biggest crock of shite that anyone could ever say. But you have these, like, the characteristics that you can't put your finger on or fully explain. But you're like, yeah, definitely American. And this tastes like Americana craft. And it's very, very good. It's one of those beers where your palate doesn't like adjust straight away. So every time you take a sip, it's a big burst of flavor. And there's a fly here who wants uh, another sip of it, but you're not having any. I paid 10 quid for this. I'd say for the experience, it's worth it. Would I buy stuff like this on a regular basis? No. Um, I'm at that point where most of my beer purchasing, unfortunately, is stuff from supermarkets and then having a little bit of a splurge. If I'm out in the city, I go to a bottle shop or a tap room or a bar and there's some interesting beers in the fridge, yeah, I'll pick them up. I'll probably do like a cheeky brewery order online just because I'm like, oh, I'm really in the mood to try some brew beers from Sometimes I'll go the full hog and make a £70 worth order um, with Trembling Madness. Get a varied selection, 70 quid, get your free delivery. Because God forbid you pay much less and then pay the postage, which is probably, I don't know how much postage is before you reach that threshold. Um, but you like just buy, I could actually buy a beer for what I've paid for postage. So I will pay so much more to get the free delivery. Um, luckily, um, I've got people like Adam from Mersey Bears who will always pop up and say, oh, I'm doing an order from here, I'm doing an order from here, do you want me to pick some stuff up? And then if I do my classic thing of saying, oh, fancy, I might do a, a beer, an order from such and such, never fall, you know, go through with it. And then they'll say, oh, if you, if you wanna boost it up, keep the costs down as well so you don't pay postage 
I'll see if there's any beers I want. So yeah. Again, complete loss of train of thought, so I don't know what the point I was trying to make. I'm just absolutely like amazed with the gradient of the sky over there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful evening. Um, I mean, I would pan the camera over there, but I've got loads of like bin bags of shite that were waiting for a skip to put in, so I don't want to ruin the illusion um, of a beautiful early September evening. But yeah, is it really a pale ale though at 6.6%? I've never truly like looked into like what would technically be the difference between a pale ale to an IPA and then to an IPA to a double IPA. See, my like assumption of a double IPA is anything 8% upwards. That's probably a really ignorant way of looking at it. So I don't know if this, you know, it's like on the border of what a pale ale should be. Is it to do with the ABV? Is it to do with like the the intensity of the hops? Is it to do with like the malt build itself? I'm, I'm leaning towards the malt build, which is the primary. But then again, I don't know. I don't know anything um, in general. I just don't know anything. So I don't know like the, the guidelines and regulations. Before I start recording this, I had a big grand idea of how I'm going to do this video um, because just I got a random Christmas present of family because, you know, I'm sure a lot of you out there will completely relate to this, but because you like beer, that's like the, you get beer related um, presents for your birthday, Christmas, bar mitzvah, passing out ceremony, I don't know. But I randomly got a book by Mark Dredge, and I was thinking, surely there's something written about this beer. Um, but the book I've got, the only thing uh, that's mentioned in Trillium is, I don't know even what the style is, but it's not a, a pale or anything like that. So I thought, mm, all right then. Because I'd like to do a series of like getting a beer book, not like the go-to 1,000 beers to try before you die. But, you know, just like to have a bit of structure, do something a little bit different. But, um, yeah, at least in the introduction to this video, it's not, you know, rampant line beer reviews uh, level of information. Where it's like a beer lecture. Um, in fact, I think he could easily do, like, a beer lecture tour. <laughs> Where he just gets, mind you, he doesn't get pissed, does he? Because he hardly drinks. Um, <coughs> all of a sudden, it became really wheezy. Might not wake up tomorrow morning. But at least if that happens, I've tried, you know, a beer to tick off the list. Another thing that put me off buying these beers when I first saw them on the, the web shops was, like, there was a difference of, like, a pound, two pounds between a pale ale and a double IPA. And you know when something doesn't really doesn't really match up? And I was like, well, why would I pay that for a pale ale when for like a pound or two pound more I can get a double IPA? But again, you know, places have to charge what they have to charge. They have to make money off importing stuff like this. Um, so I don't think this was what I paid for this was the cheapest that I saw it. Seeing it, proper English. But at the same time, I've seen this being sold for more than what I paid. So it's a happy medium. Um, like I said, wouldn't become a regular thing. He says that, but look at how many times he buys random other half beers. But I don't know. I, I like the fact that these beers have become more accessible. Um, I used to be that knobhead who thought, oh, I like, I like the the thrill of finding these beers but then realise you're getting excited about uh, an alcoholic beverage which uh, to people who don't fully understand will make you look like a raging alcoholic but um, yeah what started off as a really good informative video has just turned into a rambly mess but I pay 10 quid so I'm going to get as much mileage as I can out of this 
it's just become much more satisfying to drink the more I drink it. So treat yourself. You might get buyer's remorse uh, once you've picked it up, but I'd highly, highly recommend it. Yes, we can brew beers like this, but again, I don't know if it's just in my head, trying to justify the purchase, but I never use my hands as much as this in like normal conversation, by the way. It's just one of the many masks and facades and characters that I play. Um, I completely lost my train of thought again. Anyway, um, what was I trying to say? I don't know. But yeah, there's, and it, it just annoys me how it just randomly pops back in. Uh, that's what she said. A childish, slightly sexist. Hashtag problematic. Um, but yeah, there's just something a little bit different about this. I haven't had a pale ale recently from a UK brewery and that's quite tasted like this. There's just that tiny little thing about it. Maybe it's the romanticism and um, yeah, but I don't know. You see the artwork, you imagine what the place must look like and uh, I would imagine, he's used imagine too many times, but Carlton in Boston is a really nice picturesque um, almost like traditional American yet European influenced part of America Americana um, I'm long overdue a little trip to the States even if it just means a really expensive long weekend in one American city um, I did almost go to New York to watch the Strokes um, and they were being supported by Mac DeMarco uh, they were initially going to be supported by Idols, but who the fuck wants to listen to Idols? Anyway, I've not even had any tea yet. Nights are slowly coming in. That doesn't make any sense. And uh, yeah, so if you tried this, then let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Um, what's your favourite version of Fort Point that you've had? Um, which of the like the other specific dry hopped editions are worth trying? Um, how does this compare to just the basic thought point? Um, and as I said, there's a really interesting article uh, that I will do my best to remember to include in the description down below about the uh, artwork and the artist. I love stuff like that. And um, yeah, I like it when breweries and brands have like a genuine identity um, and there's a story behind it there's thought you know there's actual thought and meaning put in there sometimes you know you just want to be a label though that's just a really silly random design um, but yeah lovely stuff indeed highly recommended and uh, yeah all additional information will be in the description down below so thank you for nearly spending half an hour over a, a pale ale with me. Um, it's getting a bit late. It's ten past eight. Didn't mean to sound like John uh, Cooper Clark then. Didn't sound like John Cooper Clark at all. And uh, yeah, so I need to go have some food and I'll probably do another beer review. Because I'm proper in the mood for a couple of beers tonight. But I've only either got a coffee stout or a triple IPA left um, before I uh, replenish my beers. And because it's been warmer, I think I've been having a beer or two every night this past week or so. But, you know, life's worth living. And uh, that's why I'm going to justify it to myself for paying £10 for a pale ale, which I would say has been worth it. And for the 4.23 out of 5, I think that's pretty spot on. So yeah, cheers for watching. You all take care, stay safe, and I shall hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.